Events since 2001 have spurred greater investment in foreign assistance, but many of these resources have been located outside of USAID. Roughly two dozen departments and agencies have taken over some aspects of foreign assistance, including the Department of Defense and the Department of Agriculture. Now, the President has advocated doubling foreign assistance over time and has announced new initiatives on food security and health. Given the increased resources needed for these initiatives, it is crucial that the American people and the Congress have confidence that these funds will be used efficiently. USAID must have a central role in development policy decisions. If we are to avoid inefficient experimentation, it must have the capacity to evaluate programs and to disseminate information about best practices and methods. And that requires policymakers to continue augmenting the agency's staffing and expertise. These principles are reflected in legislation that Senator Kerry and I introduced last year, Senate Bill 1524, the Foreign Assistance Revitalization and Accountability Act. The administration has initiated two separate studies, the State Department's Quadrennial Diplomatic and Development Review and the National Security Council's Presidential Study Directive on Development in an attempt to make recommendations on how development programs can better support United States foreign policy objectives. The QDDR will not be completed until this fall, and it's uncertain when or if we will know the outcome of the PSD. I'm eager to review the administration's ideas when they are ready, but in the meantime, the Congress should be offering its own ideas on how to improve our government's development capacity. The Kerry Luger Foreign Assistance Reform Bill is the product of well over a year of research and analysis by senators and their staffs. It has strong support in the aid community. It is co-sponsored by a bipartisan group of 23 senators, 12 of whom are members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Now, this level of backing for a bill related to foreign assistance is extremely rare. It provides an opportunity to build something approaching a consensus on this issue. And I'm very hopeful that the executive branch will recognize that a bill co-sponsored by a majority of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and nearly a quarter of the full Senate should be given substantial weight in its review process. A strong development agency that serves under the foreign policy guidance of the Secretary of State as envisioned in our bill will best empower her to advance United States goals. Now, even as we can re reconsider our development architecture, it's vital that development policy is guided by objectives rather than by how we organize our government to deliver development assistance. In other words, we should focus on the big issues, food scarcity, poverty, disease, environmental degradation that prevent economic growth in a large swath of the world's countries. Now, these objectives require that strategies reflect the needs of countries we are helping rather than the vagaries of our own budget process, which often allocates funds in response to lobbying pressures, media interest, or even political favoritism. <laughs> Country strategies based on broad objectives also give us the best chance to avoid dependence on arbitrary spending targets for specific sectors. For example, promoting food security 
requires investments not just in agricultural production, but in clean water, in infrastructure, basic and higher education, and land titling, to name just a few factors. The Global Food Security Act, which I've authored with Senator Casey of Pennsylvania and which Senator Kerry has co-sponsored, reflects these principles. The food price crisis that occurred in 2008 resulted from a culmination of policy choices by donor and recipient governments over a decades-long period. And that crisis was surely a wake-up call for the development community, for international donors, and for policymakers worldwide. Because achieving food security must be a multi-sector endeavor that goes beyond simply raising crop yields, U.S. policy must seek to integrate a variety of approaches and actors. At the same time, we do not want to delegate responsibility for food security to multiple departments. That could further weaken our already fractured foreign assistance structure. And that is why our bill designates USAID, which has the broad development experience necessary as the lead agency to implement that strategy. I want to put the term whole of government in perspective. The term whole of government has come into vogue in policy circles, and to the extent that the term underscores the complexity of development problems and the need to apply the talents of a diverse set of agencies to their solution, it is useful and descriptive. Our government must have the capacity to draw on expertise to achieve vital development missions without artificial barriers created by agencies. Many agencies are working together successfully on development problems in many parts of the world. But we should not mistake the term whole of government for an organizational strategy. Even if multiple agencies are making contributions, someone must be in charge. Someone must coordinate the activities of all involved. And someone must take responsibility for inefficiencies and failures. Now, this is especially important in a development context because of our highly fragmented aid system. The risk is then that the term whole of government will be used to justify that fragmentation or to preserve roles for agencies where they are not justified. We also must be careful that the whole of government concept does not redefine development as a series of technical decisions from where to dig wells to which seeds to plant in which soils. Such a redefinition would devalue the discipline of development, which many practitioners have spent a lifetime studying and testing. We know from long experience that technical expertise must be grounded in an understanding of development.